Hello everybody and welcome to this Rhino video tutorial. I am Vanessa Steg, and in today's tutorial I would like to walk you through the process of making this organic bench made out of serialized wood panels. So let's get started. I will deactivate the current layer and as you can see I have already constructed a rectangle that is 45 centimeters in depth and 70 centimeters tall. I then lock the rectangle in place to avoid moving it by mistake. The rectangle helped me dimension the seating part of my bench. For the profile curve, I used the control point curve command in Rhino. Once your profile is drawn, hop over to the transform tab and over into the array toolbar. As you can see, Rhino has multiple options to array. Arrays help you create multiple copies of your objects at equal distances. In this case, we will use the linear array command. So run the command and select your profile curve. Then press enter. For the number of copies, type in 5 and press enter. As a first reference point, type in 0 and press enter. At this point, we want to determine the distance between each copy. So type in 80 and press enter. Now to end the command, we need to click a second point on the plane. I want to align that second point to the y-axis of my plane. So I will momentarily activate distance constraint or ortho by holding down the shift key and clicking. Once your five profile curves are in place, hop over to the surface tools tab. Now, make sure at this point that record history is activated or otherwise click on it until it is. Now run the loft command. Select all of your profile curves and press enter. Make sure the arrows are all pointing in the same direction. Otherwise use the flip option in the command line. Then press enter to get a preview of your lofted surface. Under the options, Make sure you select Normal for Style and do not simplify. Then Validate. Now, because history was activated before making the loft, there's an association between the curves and the resulting surface. If I start moving the curves or editing them, the surface will follow along. So let's take a look at that. I will activate the gumball as well as the filters down on the modeling aids. Now, right-click on Curves to have only curves selected as an option, and then left-click on Control Points to add that to the selection filters. See, selection filters will limit the amount of objects that you can select on screen. This will avoid having the selection menu pop up. At this point, we can start selecting the middle profile curve and moving it forward. And there, the sculpting starts. I will now select the second profile curve and move it closer to the first so that the curvature on this end smoothens out. I'll do the same with my fourth profile curve. I might move this one again a little bit forward. And with my fourth profile curve, I'll start control point to editing it to reduce the size, allowing to build a smaller seating area for children. So I'll select all of the top control points and move them down. Probably do the same for the top control points. And again, pushing these inward. and so forth, the sculpting possibilities are infinite. To align points, make sure the point object snap is activated. That way, when you pull a point with the gumball, you can reference a second point and align it to that. Once you're satisfied with the result, close the selection filters. And now let's move over to the Curve Tools tab 
and over to the last toolbar, which is the Curve from Objects. This toolbar will help you obtain curves and points from 3D geometry. In this case, we will run the Contour command. Select the surface and press Enter. We now need to determine the Contour Plane, which is a line that will be perpendicular to the sections that Rhino will create. So click a point anywhere in space, and then by holding down Shift and activating Ortho, click a second point again aligned to the Y axis. Then, determine the distance between each one of the sections by typing in 4 and pressing Enter. And then Rhino will automatically calculate all of the sections. While the sections are still selected, hop over to the Layer 01, right-click, and select Change Object Layer. We can now activate it and deactivate the default layer so that we only have our curves on screen. Now, while the curves are still selected, let's hop over to the Solid Tools tab and run the Extrude Planner Curve command. This command will help me transform each one of my curves or sections into solids. Make sure both sides are set to yes so that the curve is in the middle of the solid and enter the extrusion distance. In this case, set it to 1 and press enter. While the curves are still selected, hop over to the standard tab and click on the light bulb icon to hide all of the curves. And there we go. Our bench is created. Thank you for watching.